Okay, another demo of Builder, and it's now self-aware. It runs itself. You can build the application using the application. As we pull up the uh, editor, it's not much change in the design, except we have a real console down the bottom now. You get to see that in a little bit. So the sample projects include comes with the application. Is actually the application itself at the moment. We'll probably put a few more examples in there. What we're going to do now is just uh, at the moment we've got a editing window in the middle right, in the middle of the top, and I thought it'd be quite useful to have a help window in there. So this is something you can't do in Glade. We can actually add a notebook to the container above there, and you can see there, and then we're going to add the notebook into the notebook. So we're actually reordering the uh, tree and as you can see it's gone blank on the right. This is partly because the packing methods are not uh, auto aware at the moment. Um, so you actually have to manually modify. You can only add, you can't pack. There we go. So we pack and we add. Uh, it's not working on the right. There's a little bug there but we skipped a bit. So anyway, you can see at the bottom of the console we actually ran it earlier and uh, it shows the error message so we can find the bug. Uh, it's quite handy to be able to see that uh, pulled up. So we're going to add into this new notebook a second tab which is going to be our HTML editor or HTML viewer which is the WebKit. We'll just drag and drop it in and there we go. We're going to give it an ID because using this system everything is referred to with uh, get and then ID and slash takes us to the top and then you'll go down and try and find the ID you're looking for. So we quickly ran it there. That's, uh, so we're uh, now at the point we have two pages. We can't actually see them yet. This is a little bug. But uh, as we, uh, what we're going to do now is going to look around at the code for the old GTK view. So I can find the example code on here we are. So this el.open is how it loads a file, how it loads the HTML widget loads a file. Well we haven't got a help, we're adding a help now. We'd normally be able to look that up in the help, but at the moment we're looking up in the existing code by just browsing around. Clicking on any element in the preview area, it automatically jumps the tree to that element, so it's quite easy to navigate, even on this quite large tree, which is this application. So we've given that a little name, we're going to go back to uh, our source code editor and what happens when you start to edit, so the view element and the load method of the view element. Little pipes indicate they're, um, not, they're basically raw JavaScript, it usually is a function or a, a symbol or something like that. that we can, uh, it's a standard we use in this system, although it may may be invisible later, I don't know. It's actually quite a handy reference to be able to see. And there we go, we add a little note in. You see the background colour is changing of the editor as there is actually a syntax error. Um, we may go towards using little red icons as we type for this. But, uh, it's quite cute the way that uh, you can actually determine that uh, the code will run or has a good chance of running if you've uh, syntax. Now, now we know we've set it so that the tab appears when you start editing. Now I want to look up the code to see uh, how do we determine what node is being edited. And you can put your mouse over these elements and it shows you the code or you can actually click on them, you can edit them. You can see this one is the middle property tree, is a has a method that manages to get the um, get the current name of the edited element. Should really be a better uh, way of doing this as in calling something like left tree get active element name or something but uh, for the time being for this demo we'll just copy and paste some existing code we go back to our source code editor and double click and we'll paste in the code that gets the active element so this one that's we clicked on a gtk window this method is going to return uh, so it asks the, the left trees model to get the file and the file class has a method get na guess name which is returns that and the active element in the mid prop tree is actually the J um, JavaScript uh, class or structure associative array that 
uh, defines the actual element being edited. And now we're just going to <coughs> tell the browser that we created earlier. So always referencing this dot window goes to the top of the display and help help view or whatever you you can use slash doesn't slash just starts at the top the fact the window is at the top is quite kind of irrelevant so we could actually type slash help view so I'm typing dot el load and then my website standard JavaScript add a string and dot HTML hunky dory and it's syntax now I just can't remember because I haven't got a help system where the load is a method to call on uh, GTA source view so I just have a quick look at the web kit well, before that, we'll just add in the ID on the WebKit so that when we actually get call that get method, it actually gets that element. Now we just want to double check. As I said, the existing web view is used for something else, and it's actually open, not not uh, load. So we can go back and change that in the uh, code we've just written. Let's find it correctly. It's, uh, yeah, the view in it load. Yep, the load. So there, and we're going to say open. Okay, now press the run application, you get to see the terminal output down there, and the application runs. No need to compile, no need to open out a shell or anything, it's just a one click, fire off, and you're running the application. The fun bit here is we're actually editing the application that we're editing, and as you can see, the uh, help menu is there now, and uh, I forgot to close the application and started using the application started using the application to edit it itself. So you can actually carry on recursively using itself forever and ever. So what I want to do now is, well, the tabs don't look very good, so what we're doing is copying the tabs name labeling, and we add an init method, and we just add after the element's been created, and we just set the, lab the labels on the uh, Obviously, uh, tool, toolbars probably need a bit more thought about how we can work with the G-Object system to set labels a bit better, but for the time being, this is a nice, easy way to uh, set the label for the thing. And we're going to go back, and actually we're three levels deep now, running the application. And as you can see, we've now got help and preview. And I think at this point, I decided, well, that's a bit weird. When I go to the help page, there's nothing there. Why not just put the index page? on the help page. So let's go back into the WebKit view. So I'll copy the code to load up a page. And I'm going to go back to the init method of the uh, I'm just noting that we haven't got a source view uh, manual page yet, so I might have to look at that. Anyway, let's go back and see where we're going. Uh, notebook helper second tab in there, scroll view, uh, add the init method, and after it's in it, what we do is we're going to load up the index page with all the manual pages. And go to page one, run the application. Well, there we go, it comes up, help. Oh, well, there's actually some help there. And that's it. That's uh, getting pretty far along now. We're actually write applications very, very rapidly.